Don't Starve Together is a game I really enjoy playing, but I also enjoy complaining, and there's some parts of Don't Starve Together that are perfect to complain about, like the bad mechanics. I have prepared a nice list here, but this is all of course my opinion. I would love to hear what you think in the comments so I can also get more video engagement, and to see if you think some mechanics are worse or better than what I've put on the list. Anyways, on to the honorable mentions. The removal of void walking is one of my least favorite changes in modern Don't Starve, but realistically it's not really that big of a deal, so I can't really complain about it too much, and it's not an outright bad change, I think they have made it work. Another one that, that is pretty terrible and I've seen ruined speedruns, but I am personally not affected by, is Celestial Orb Drop Rates. I know they's, they've also worked to improve this one, so that's nice as well. Good job, Clay! Another one I wanted to put on here is ocean fishing, because I don't know how to do it, so it's automatically a terrible mechanic. And also Walter, because Walter's stupid and he's terrible. Anyways, now onto the actual list. Number 10. This section was going to be dedicated to wildfires, but after thinking it over, there's a worse summer random griefing event, and that is antlion attacks. Pretty much without warning, antlion will start attacking you. And if you don't notice in time, or if you're a little too slow, then boom, a bunch of your structures get instantly destroyed, and there's a big sinkhole in your base that will take a few days to come back. Certainly more destructive than wildfires are, and wildfires can be easily countered by the ice flingomatic. And I've seen the destruction antlion attacks can do, and I think it's kind of funny, but I also think it's pretty stupid. So yeah. Also, antlion's a dumb boss. Number 9! Tentapillars are so annoying. Before they added the specific atrium one, they still were annoying to find because just the fight in general is annoying. They're hard to target, and I, I just don't like fighting the stupid baby tentacles. It's just like, here's a big station to waste all your armor durability. You pretty much just have to face tank it if you want to make any reasonable progress. Luckily now, they have marked a specific pillar, except it's not good because now it's in the middle of useless biome number 17, and, I, and now there's two bishops outside. You know what, I don't even want to fight the bishops, I don't even care about the bishops. Because even if I do all that, I still have to traverse the atrium, which I don't want to do that either. Just make it go straight to stupid whatever guy's spawn room. And the worst part is, the tentacle, it respawns when you're trying to leave. And that sucks and I hate Don't Starve. And that's why tinted pillars are the worst mechanic. Number 8! The whole time I was fighting the Rabbit King, I was like, why is this guy even in the game? This feels like somebody's like, Smash Bros OC. <laughs> For Don't Starve. Is this like Woody's scrapped wear form or something and that's and they're just reusing it now? Because that's kind of what it feels like. The boss fight is nothing special. He just spawns these rabbits that don't aggro onto anything else but you. Which is so fun. I love it when monsters just chase me for no reason. And they also teleport so you can't even like run away from them for too long. Or they'll spawn on you. Which is just annoying. It's one of the more annoying things a enemy spamming boss could do. Is make them teleport on you. And he also does the modern boss thing, which is really dumb, where he, like, if he'll miss an attack, he'll just stun himself with, oh, wow, modern bosses so deep in thought, where they purposely hinder themselves to make the fight easier. Ooh, ooh. It's so stupid. I At least he doesn't, like, make you slip or do knockback or something dumb. Also, his drops aren't even that good. I didn't even get the horn, and I don't know how to... Maybe I have to pacifist route and be a kind soul to the Rabbit King. But, um, yeah, I beat the crap out of him, and he gave me this worst tentacle spike, which is pretty cool. Wow, awesome. I'm so glad he spawned on me in the ruins. What if I wasn't playing WX here? I'd be screwed. Why is this a thing? <laughs> Number seven. Okay, this next one is kind of like, I don't really have footage for this, but I will do a good job explaining it with images. So basically, if one player dies and are revived by another player using the Telltale Heart, they will have less max health, permanently, or well not permanently, you can and do it with booster shots, but those are going to get, especially early game when you would be using Telltale Hearts. So having really low set max health for getting revived, and from the floor pro stream, that's just kind of annoying, and most of the time you will get spawn camped, or it'll get to a point where it's like, I cannot leave the base anymore or I will die, because I'm a noob and I don't know how to get booster shots on my own. Max health penalty just feels like a, um, a screw over new players mechanic, and really, life giving amulet. I get it's like to make sure life giving amulet is better than a telltale heart, but it already is better because you can use it on your own without having to have somebody use it on you. So I think that is like a fair enough way off, you know, to justify max health penalty being stupid. 
And um, I always turn it off when I play with friends because I'm a casual gamer when I play with friends, but I'm competitive when I'm alone. Number six. This next one is about bosses enraging slash despawning. It doesn't happen often, but when it happens, it stings. There's really only two bosses that this apply. Well, I guess three if you count Bee Queen. But Dragonfly is the main offender of both despawning and enraging, and so is Claws. Claws kind of gets a pass because whenever he enrages, it's kind of funny. Because oh, strongest enemy in the game. But Dragonfly Enrage, it just is annoying. I'm tired of pretending it's not an, a big annoying feature. I know if you just pack the pan flute, it's okay, but if you're playing as Winona and your catapults will not stop attacking, so you can't put them to sleep, well, surprise, now you can't fight the boss with catapults. Which, why, are you, why else would you even play that character? Same with swarming with Merms and Pigmen, although Merms are overpowered, so they're probably going to shred Dragonfly anyway. During my Pigmen run, this is a huge, pretty much run killer. <laughs> it tempts killer every time it happened. And boss enraging, like, cl whenever Claws enrages during the fight, it's just like, really, bro. This really only happens if you're trying to have fun with the game and do things differently. So, very cool that there's a way, it's literally 1984. Number five. It's frog raining. Oh my god. That's another horrible mechanic. It's just, it's just, it's just like a big middle finger as an event. Or you can't do anything now, or you're gonna lose all your items. It's like the worst thing. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna go insane! Stop attacking me for once, just leave me alone! I hate this game sometimes. I absolutely hate this game sometimes. <sighs> Where this one enemy just wants to aggro onto me for no reason, and chase me around for like a minute. I just camped the one area I need to go in. Frog raids are 1 billion percent the worst part of spring. And even if, like, you can manipulate them into, like, killing Mooscoos for you or something, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really use weather pants that much. And I don't like the frogs. They'll aggro onto you w with whatever you're doing. And, oh, I'm Wirt. I don't get frogs aggroed onto me. I don't care, Wirt. You play like a nerd anyway. Um, yeah, I don't like froggies. And I also don't like how, like, they just like sit around at one spot and they don't move and they'll be in your base until the event ends And if you attack one then you are screwed because they're all going to come after you It's pretty much like if a bunch of landmines just fell over from the sky around your base It's I'd honestly probably be better than frog rain. Yeah, I know you can turn it off and I know it's like only like for like a few days But those few days count and they, oh, I hate frog rain. number four if hound attacks are annoying, deathworm attacks are annoying squared. These guys have 900 health apiece and attack in like groups of like four, so they're really hard to kite. Of course, playing Maxwell, I am at an advantage here, but this is annoying, and I'm not even in one of the parts of the caves that's just like the worthless random mine that could just run away forever. And really, every time a deathworm attacks, normally you're in an important area, aka a dangerous area, where you don't want deathworms to attack. And I get Oh, it's Don't Starve. It's supposed to be random hard, but like, this is just annoying and stupid. You could just get screwed over by rather, whether depth worms decide to attack or not. And no, I don't want to hear, a, oh, you should have planned for that argument. I will discuss all the arguments to these dumb mechanics at the end of the video, probably. But depth worms are stupid and they don't drop anything good. No, Warly dish doesn't count because nobody plays Warly. <laughs> and I don't like depth worms. I really don't like depth worms. Don't even get me started on the stupid giant death room. I haven't even encountered him in game, but I can tell you he's probably awful. I'm always right, so you know, just my my theory. Um, yeah, apparently he can be stunned by eating, and whoa, new boss getting stunned. What? It's a crazy new feature. Yeah, I don't like death rooms. I probably won't like the big death room, but I will I have to wait until I encounter him, and that'll also probably be the day I quit Don't no Star Forever. Number three. Oh, this one just pushes my buttons. You didn't even know. I feel like I... I can't remember when I figured out this mechanic was a thing, but I'm pretty sure I was, like, baffled. Like, how did this make it into the game? This mechanic is slipping. Slipping on icy structures. Why on earth did they add this? Oh my god, it's so stupid. It literally just, like, makes Frost Drop super unfun. He's not... He's already not that good of a boss fight, but slipping, like, really? Why do they need to put that into the game? Same with the reworked Crab King, and I don't really like him either. Slipping just adds to the adds to the fire, I guess, or I guess ice. 
and also just traversing through the world slipping on ponds and the stupid ice it's annoying it's fun to go fast and it's really helpful to go fast so just making it if you go fast you get punished or sometimes even if you don't go fast you get punished it's stupid it's like a just random speed bump I don't know why they needed to add this mechanic it ruins so much of the game well not really that much Did he slip? <laughs> Number two. Okay, this next mechanic, I probably honestly would put slipping over it now that I'm thinking about it. But knockback is genuinely horrible. It is just makes most of the modern boss fights super duper unfun. I don't know how anybody thinks getting three hit unescapable combo by a stupid scrappy wear pig is a good time or a good design for a boss. Knockback is just like <laughs> so boring and dumb. I don't even want to go get clips for fighting wear pig. It's like 1 a.m. right now. I just want to get this video out. The slop slop talk video. Um, yeah, it really ruins the wear pig fight. It kind of ruins the frost draw fight. Um, I can't, I'm trying to think what else has. I know Nightmare Whip has knockback, but it's not that big of a deal. I just really don't like it in the instances it's used. Yeah, pretty much enemy fling you back, and you can't move for a little bit. Wow, so cool. I think some of the planar enemies do it. Well, Rifts are dumb anyway, so who really cares? And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, uh, the grogginess is starting to set in. The number one worst mechanic in Don't Starve Together. B -b 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 it's... Farming! Farming is really boring, and yeah, this is this is bait ending. This is bait. Um, this is not true. I actually do kind of like farming. Pirate raids is like every single previous other bad thing all mushed together into one disgusting slop mechanic that makes ocean exploration horrible. First of all, RNG based. You might be in the quadrant of the world with the Monkey Island, who knows until you hear the music and you get randomly attacked by them, which is also a chance. So you could be going to Lunar Island back and forth, back and forth, and then all of a sudden you're attacked by stupid pirate monkeys and get your ship robbed. It's annoying. You could just finish the Crab King fight and, oh, look, pirate monkeys are here to ruin your day. And then you just have to roll back because there's no, there's no other thing to do. They take your items and they leave with them and they bury them across the world. That is so annoying. There's pretty much most of my rollbacks are probably just from pirate monkeys spawning in. There's no justification for them existing. They punish you for exploring the ocean, which is 95% wasted space anyways. Sea stacks are already a big enough punishment for exploring the ocean. Time is already a big enough punishment for exploring the ocean. Pirate monkeys do not add anything either. Their all the drops are pretty terrible, and they give you the stupid cursed trinkets even if you do kill them. Which just, screw you, you get to turn into stupid wonky. And these items will take up a slot in your inventory unless you kill yourself! Because that's like the only way to get rid of them now. Although, it is pretty funny if you go to Monkey Island and get a bunch of trinkets and then like, die on the mainland on a pub server so somebody just randomly gets the curse. That's pretty funny. But I guess this also ties into Curse of the Moon K. It's stupid. All of it's stupid. All of the stupid whole Monkey Island is stupid except for banana bushes. Those are pretty hype. But everything to do with the powder monkeys and the pirate raids are so terrible and annoying and dumb and I hate them. So yeah, that was my list. Um, if you agree, that's cool. You're right. If you disagree, bam, try again. Unless you do have a legitimately good other argument. What other thing I'm tired about for Don't Starve is people glazing all the new updates. Like guys, not everything Clay produces is gold. And I think holding them to a standard is good. Which is my justification for making a video calling like a bunch of mechanics really stupid, because they are. Um, yeah, if you have some sort of uh, counter argument for my points, I'd also love to hear those. I'd love to tear your argument to shreds or just ignore it if I can't find a good reason. Um, common points like, oh, well, Don't Starve's supposed to be uncompromising. It's evolved past that. Let's all just be honest here. Um. I'm trying to think what else I could say to possibly close out the video. Have a good night's sleep.